What's your name? Joe Sales. You are charged with assault occasioning actual bodily harm. Joe! You better be getting a good shot of this! <laughs> Is it even possible that you mistook what Alex actually said? I definitely heard Joe. I did recover a pair of dark blue sneakers, which I later sent for forensic analysis. And did you find anything on these sneakers when you examined them? Yes, I detected a small amount of blood on the sole of the right trainer. Is there any way that Joe's house can be lying to you? I don't think my cousin ever lied to me, to be honest. How do you plead guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. The Old Bailey, London. Crowned by the statue of Lady Justice, this is the most famous criminal court in the world. All rise. For the first time ever, cameras have been allowed inside an Old Bailey courtroom, and the case you're about to see is unique. All the key roles, including barristers, the jury, and witnesses, will be played by teenagers from UK state schools, who are getting an opportunity to find out for themselves how the legal system really works. As the trial unfolds, they will gain a unique insight into the anatomy of a court case. You weren't anywhere near to follow Joseph. Yes, I was. I saw her have a nosebleed. And overseeing proceedings is a real judge, former Attorney General Baroness Scotland QC. All questions of evidence and fact are for you alone to decide. Acting as mentors, guiding the students through the trial are two teams of expert barristers. Assisting the prosecution team from Essex are Tim Salisbury and Nicola McKinney. You're going to be a lot more aggressive. And aiding the defence team from London are Jacqueline Caspi and Lawrence Power. Practice makes perfect and it's needed here. The case is fictional, but the battle between prosecution and defence to prove guilt beyond reasonable doubt is very real. You say you heard someone behind you. Did you turn around to see who this person was? No, I didn't. Would it be accurate to assume that your hearing may have been slightly impaired? I don't think that's fair to say at all. So you wouldn't like to see her in trouble? No, I wouldn't. They're going to have to say she's a liar. In fact, that's why you're here, to lie to protect her. She's had she, to do she, that. She has to. They are the Young Legal Eagles. When the criminal trial process begins, a defendant is regarded as innocent. The prosecution must prepare their evidence. They must prepare their witnesses and their other physical evidence uh, and prove the guilt of the defendant through the trial process if the defendant pleads not guilty to what he's charged with. In the courts of England, England and Wales, we have an adversarial system, so you have two sides in any courtroom. It's going to be, well, in a criminal court, prosecution and defence. And they're pitted against each other, and the end result is supposed to be a fair result. So how do you achieve that? Taking on the case for the prosecution are Sam Byrne and Hannah Gladwell. I think when you get in there, You've got a member to keep professional, but I think the adrenaline kicks in and you kind of almost rely on that a little bit yeah. to propel you forward. You've heard well, so you know what you have to say. It's yeah. just being professional about it. Before we start, I think it would be helpful just to maybe go through what we think the prosecution actually does in a trial. What's their ultimate goal? I would say is to try and get, obviously, the jury to get a guilty verdict at the end. Okay. So to try and present evidence to show that. Any other... Uh, considerations that the prosecution might might have in mind. You have to prove it beyond reasonable doubt as a prosecution barrister, yeah. whereas the defence have just got to present like, reasonable doubt in a case. Every prosecutor also has to bear in mind that um, they're acting in the interest of justice, so they're not trying to secure a conviction at all costs. The prosecution's presenting a factual um, picture that if all the evidence is shown to be accurate, they say is enough for a conviction. The defence is then going to try and pick that apart. The prosecution, short for the Crown Prosecution Service, work on behalf of the government and they bring the case against the defendant. It's not the defendant's role to disprove or to prove their innocence, but rather to test the prosecution's case. Representing the defence are Deborah Asenjay and Sadie Marshall. And like if something doesn't go well, I have to think on my feet, okay, right, what am I going to do, what am I going to say? It all lies on me. I have to just go with it. So I think it's brought a little confidence to the table. The first thing I want you to understand is when you make your arguments in this case, you'll be making them for a jury. And that's the most important thing to know. 
The role of the defence is to persuade the jury that there is reasonable doubt in the case that they're hearing. That means that they can't be certain about the prosecution case. All rise. Many people take part in making the justice system work. Overseeing the court proceedings is the judge, who is employed by the state. The judge has a very different job to the job of either counsel for the prosecution or counsel for the defence. The judge, if you like, is the fair umpire to make sure a fair um, uh, contribution is made by all and the jury has the best chance to understand what actually happened on the day in question. Assisting the judge is the court clerk, who begins the trial by reading out the charge. What's your name? Joe Sales. You are charged with assault occasioning actual bodily harm, contrary to section 47 of the Offences Against the Persons Act 1861, in that you, Joe Sales, on the first day of March 2011, together with Alex Jordan and persons unknown, assaulted Farley Joseph, occasioning Farley Joseph actual bodily harm. Do you understand? Yes. The position is a defendant can either plead guilty, which means that they accept the evidence presented and they accept they've done wrong, and then they will be sentenced and punished for their offence. The alternative is that a defendant pleads not guilty, says that they didn't do it, and that they will dispute or fight the case against them. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. You may be seated. Could the jury please rise? Could you repeat after me? I will faithfully try the defendant. I will faithfully try the defendant. And give a true verdict according to the evidence. The reason it's so important to have a jury is that that is where ordinary men and women are able to adjudicate on those facts and we're able to have a trial by people who are just like us. Prior to the trial of Joe Sales, Alex Jordan was found guilty of assault causing actual bodily harm for the attack upon Farley Joseph. In the case of the Queen versus Sales, although there is no allegation that Joe Sales struck the victim, she allegedly filmed the attack and is being charged under the principle of joint enterprise for the same offence as Alex Jordan. What you're about to see is a dramatic reconstruction of the attack on Farley Joseph, based on the victim's testimony. On the 1st of March 2011, Farley Joseph was walking through Hillside Park on her way home from school listening to songs on her MP3 player. Waiting for her inside the park was Alex Jordan, who intended on teaching Farley a lesson by filming an attack on her and posting it on the internet. Here she comes. Right, come on. As Alex Jordan and a gang of three others approached Farley, she was also aware of someone else behind her, but did not turn around to see who it was. <laughs> I'm going to make sure everyone knows that you're a no good low life. Loser! You're a loser, Farley! Loser! Loser! Joe, you better be getting a good shot of this. Loser! Loser! When this goes loser. out on the internet, everyone will know what a loser, loser. Farley is. <laughs> 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 After a few minutes, Farley lay on the ground, dazed and upset. There was a small amount of blood on the floor. As Alex and the gang in front of her left the scene, Farley Joseph caught a glimpse of someone stepping in her blood, who she assumed must have been filming the attack. However, the defendant, Joe Sales, denies being present at the scene of the assault. The Crown's case is that Joe Sales committed actual bodily harm on the basis that she took part in the offence. Not that she actually caused the actual bodily harm, but that she knew that it was going to take place. And that is a concept called joint enterprise. With the charge against Joe Sales established... How do you plead guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. The prosecution begin proceedings with their opening statement. The Crown argued that Joe Sales was indeed one of those four others and that she indeed filmed the attack on her mobile phone. Now, members of the jury, your role will be to assess the evidence, decide the relevant facts, and in due course, deliver your verdict. I'm now going to ask prosecuting counsel to open this case to you.
Your Honour, members of the jury, along with my learned friend, Ms Gladwell, I appear for the prosecution. My learned friends, Mrs Zenger and Ms Marshall, appear for the defence. The defendant, Jo Sales, is charged with assault occasioning actual bodily harm in that she was present and filmed an attack on Farley Joseph. Now, there is no dispute over whether this attack has actually happened because Alex Jordan has already been convicted of assault occasioning actual bodily harm towards Farley Joseph. The Crown's argument is that Joe Sales was present and did indeed film this incident. If you believe this to be the case, she may be convicted under the principle of joint enterprise. Let me give you a brief outline of the facts. The opening statement for the prosecution is extremely important. It is the roadmap that you're going to use to convince the jury of what you're ultimately saying, which is that the defendant is guilty. With an opening speech, you don't want to be too lengthy. It's going to be fairly succinct, so you're not going to get into the details of the evidence they're going to hear. You're going to give them the highlights. On the 1st of March of 2011, Father Joseph was walking home through Hillside Park, where she was approached by Alex Jordan and four others. It was then that she was attacked members of the jury. The Crown argue that Joe Sowers was indeed one of those four others and that she indeed filmed the attack on her mobile phone. The first witness you will hear from is Father Joseph, the victim. She will present to you two pieces of evidence which place Joe Sowers at the scene of this attack. Firstly, she clearly heard Alex Jordan call out to Joe. And secondly, members of the jury, she saw a distinctive pair of branded dark blue sneakers trainers. Outside the courtroom, the mentors are watching the trial proceedings as they unfold. Look at his eye contact with the jury. He's not looking down. It's all recollection, and that's great in, in that communication and getting that information over. You will hear members of the jury from PC Russell, the police officer who was sent to the home address of Joe Sales. He will inform you of how he found a pair of dark blue sneakers trainers at Joe's home address, which did in fact have Father Joseph's blood on them. Now, Joe Sowers claims to have lost her mobile phone on this very day. However, the prosecution argue that she deliberately dumped her mobile phone to stop any evidence of her filming the attack being found. I hope that the defence are taking note of what he's saying because he's putting the prosecution case quite high. If you believe that Joe Sowers filmed this attack, she may be guilty under the principle of joint enterprise. Joint enterprise is simply where a group of people set out together knowing roughly what will happen. Now, if they take part in it or encourage the incident in any way, they may be equally guilty. Remember, members of the jury, you are the sole judges of fact. You must take the law from the judge. Thank you. If it pleases you, Your Honour, the Crown would like to call their first witness, Farley Joseph. After being called, the witnesses are brought into court by the usher. By being questioned under oath, the truthfulness of their statement can be examined by the jury. Playing the role of the victim, Farley Joseph, is Danielle Wright. Tell the truth. I promise to tell the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. It's very important that the students stick within their statements uh, because those statements set out the scene, the story, and the other pieces of evidence from the other witnesses. What are the main points, as prosecution team, that you want to get in uh, Farley Joseph's evidence. Um, we're trying to establish whether Joe Sales was actually there at the attack filming it. What we're trying to do is, you know, present her evidence to what she remembers, what she saw, right. and, you know, make the jury believe that that evidence is true, so using her to prove the guilt of Joe Sales. For the benefit of the court, can you please state your name? Farley Joseph. Now, I know I'm asking you the questions, but could you please keep your voice up and direct your answers towards the jury? In a courtroom, a witness will almost certainly be directed to deliver their answers to the jury. Even though they're being asked questions by the barrister, and the natural response is to answer the barrister. But the reason for that is that it's the jury who, who are going to be making the decision. Can you remember what happened on the 1st of March 2011? I was walking through Hillside Park on my way home from school. Um, I was listening to my MP3 player to try and cheer myself up a bit. And why were you cheering yourself up? Um, my boyfriend, Alex Jordan, had dumped me at lunchtime. And did you talk to him at all about this? I tried to explain to him that I wasn't cheating on him and that the text from Law's car, he, he's just my friend, you know, there was no big deal, but he wasn't listening. Um, so what was happening as you were walking home? Um, I saw Alex Jordan and three of his friends approach me um, from the front. 
I could hear someone behind me, but I didn't turn around to see who it was. And what happened after this? Alex came up to me and he grabbed me by my coat and said he's going to show everyone what a no good low life I am. And uh, he started calling me a loser um, and his mates were joining in, they were shouting at me. And how were you feeling? I was quite intimidated and upset. Did he say anything else? He spoke to the person behind me who I assume must have been uh, filming it and he shouted, Joe, you better get a good shot of this. When this goes on the internet, everyone's going to know what a loser Farley is. And are you sure of what you heard? I definitely heard the name Joe. Do you know of any Joe? Uh, the only Joe I know and that Alex knows is um, Joe Sales. And what happened after this? Um, they started punching me and pelting me with eggs. I laid on the floor crying for a bit um, and then I saw the four people in front of me run away and that was including Alex. And the person behind me ran past me um, and they stepped in my blood which was on the floor. The answer's too long. That's an entire point on the identification. Yeah. It's critical that the jury get that. You have to always think about juries as just being real people. Their attention is going to flag at times. You need to make sure that you don't rush through or assume bits of knowledge. Everything needs to be sort of connected together. And can you remember what they were wearing at all? As I was only lying on the floor, I could only see their feet, but they were definitely wearing a dark blue pair of sneakers. That's the brand sneakers. So you made your statement to the police, when was that? Uh, on the 1st of March. Um, and did they ask you about the attack? They asked me if there was any point during that day that anyone could have got my blood on their shoes. And was there? Yeah, just before afternoon registration, I had a nosebleed in the playground. I didn't have a tissue, so I had to go to the toilet to get one. And did you see this Joe Sales that day in the playground? I definitely didn't see Joe Sales in the playground. Thank you. I have no further questions for you, but if you wait there, I'm sure my learned friends will have some more for you. When a defence barrister asks prosecution witnesses questions, that's called cross-examination. The purpose of defence cross-examination is to test the evidence. That means to see if it's accurate, truthful and reliable or not. So, Miss Joseph, you were previously dumped that day? Yes, I was. And how were you feeling over the breakup? I was a little bit upset. I mean, he wouldn't listen to me about um, the text, so I suppose it's his loss, really. What do you think is a proper style of asking questions, in this case, to this victim? Obviously, they're a victim and they've been through an ordeal, so you have to kind of respect that and ask them in not a badgering way, but a sort of a calm way to actually get the evidence out of them. Am I correct in saying you were listening to music on your MP3? Yes, I was. So you had headphones in both your ears? Uh, yes. And you would agree that your ability would be impaired to some extent? I wouldn't say so. Um, it was just sort of a bit of background music. You say you heard someone behind you. Did you turn around to see who this person was? No, I didn't. So the only identification you had was sound? Yes. So you were unable to catch the identity of the person behind you? Other than their uh, footwear, yes. What was Alex shouting at you? Uh, he grabbed my coat and shouted, um, uh, I'm going to show everyone what a no good low life you are, and then said to the person behind me, Joe, you better get a good shot of this. When this goes on the internet, everyone's going to know what a loser Farley is. Is it even possible that you mistook what Alex actually said? I definitely heard Joe. You say you caught a glimpse of the trainer? Yes, I did. Are these sneaker trainers coming in your school? Um, not really. And just to remind the courts, you had the nosebleed during the day? Yes, I did. And the nosebleed took place in the playground and with no tissue. So you had to walk all the way to the toilet to take care of this? Yes, I covered my nose and mouth like this um, to try and stop, obviously, getting it on my uniform. Now, you must have been in a hurry, distressed, I take it. So you weren't looking around the playground to see who was there? No, I didn't. But how can you be so sure you didn't see Joe Sales in the playground? Well, I was focusing on my nosebleed. So therefore, you weren't focusing on who was in the playground? No, on my walk, I definitely didn't see Joe. No further questions, Your Honour. Your Honour, may we release the witness from the stand? After questioning is over, the witnesses can then choose to stay in court and watch proceedings from the witness bench. I think on balance that was a reasonable cross-examination. It was, yes. You know, I mean, regardless of whether the defendant was involved, this is still someone who's suffered a nasty Indeed, assault. it's a victim. Yep. The victim, Farley Joseph, has given her evidence. I could only see their feet, but they were definitely wearing a dark blue pair of sneakers. And the prosecution uses forensics to strengthen their case. When you examined the trainers, what were you looking for? I was looking to see if the blood could have come from Farley Joseph. <laughs> 